Hi, my name's Phil. I like to talk about politics. In this video, I'd like to discuss a rather explosive report that doctors are threatening ministers with court action if they do not publish the findings of Operation Cygnus, the study which modelled the effects of a serious flu outbreak a few years ago. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, then please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So, Operation Cygnus is being a bit of a thorn in the government's side at the moment. And the only reason they're managing it at all is by carefully controlling which journalists get to ask them questions on a daily basis. For example, last week Dominic Raab, who is deputising for the still absent Boris Johnson, was asked if he'd read the results of Operation Cygnus because it had blown up in the papers at the start of the month and he was asked, have you read this report? And he responded by saying, oh, I've read a large body of, of work, you know, he's, he's making out he's read lots and lots and lots uh, of reports at the moment but he doesn't recall reading that one he's not he wasn't definitively saying he hadn't just that he doesn't recall it now to be fair with Dominic Raab he was not a member of the government at the time Operation Cygnus took place so he, he can get to deny knowing anything about it there are some others including Boris Johnson who were who wouldn't get to say that but anyway the thing is, he's still saying he hasn't read it at this time. Now, had I been a journalist there, I'd have asked, so what have you been reading amongst these large bodies of work you've been reading? What have you been reading that is more urgent and important than a report that explains how we prepare for a pandemic? Because I'm not sure too many reports would be more important than that at the moment. But of course, I was not a journalist there. And the sort of journalist that would have asked such a question was also not there. But what Operation Cygnus was, was a, initially a 3D, three day simulation involving lots of bodies, uh, an exercise into the UK's readiness to deal with a major flu outbreak. The government at the time refused to publish the findings because they were considered, according to a government spokesperson, or no, no, sorry, according to someone who was involved in the project, not a government spokesperson, they wouldn't say this, someone who was directly involved in the project at the time, it was described as being too terrifying for the public to know. And I've, I've said before, you know, when talking about this study, uh, none of the recommendations for improvements were implemented because after this initial three day simulation, you know, recommendations were put forward, they said, right, you know, we will fail badly in the event of a viral epidemic in this country. This is what we need to put right. And, uh, and it wasn't. It wasn't, of course, because it would cost money. It would mean having to fund the NHS. Uh, we don't want to do that. We want to talk about funding the NHS, but we don't actually want to do it. We want to do the opposite. So, yeah, you know, we had years to prepare for this. Years. And one of the reasons that we are making such an arse of our measures to deal with the pandemic right now is because we didn't respond to that study done years ago. A pandemic that governments around the world have been warned about was coming. This wasn't something we just did off our own back. There were warnings about this. It's not even really, as far as I can tell, sooner than health experts were warning. The only difference is that a lot of health experts were anticipating a flu-like pandemic and what we got was a coronavirus pandemic. But at the end of the day, a viral pandemic is a viral pandemic and, and quite a lot of the measures that would have dealt with the flu pandemic would have also been useful for the coronavirus pandemic. Labour had even been warning about our lack of preparations as recently as last year. So now a group of doctors are demanding that ministers publish the findings or they're going to take the government to court to seek a judicial review to basically say that their decision to sit on it is unlawful. Now, a judicial review would have to determine whether or not the government had a legal right to keep the report secret. The doctors, I suppose, would argue that the report's publication is in the public interest, which undoubtedly it is, and that the findings in the report are relevant at the moment. So I think the argument would probably be, well, actually, you did a study that says what we need to do to help deal with a pandemic. We've got a pandemic right now. We reckon some of the you know, recommendations in there would be useful to implement right now, so we need to see what they are. Now, I so that's what I think it will be argued. I think it will be argued ultimately, uh, without me being a legal expert, that the findings could help the NHS cope better with the current crisis, therefore saving more lives than would otherwise be the case. 
But equally, I'm guessing the government will probably start to argue national security concerns. They usually do that in a case such as this. Oh, there's national security implications. That will be their first port of call. Um, but it will be interesting to see how the court action plays out if it, if it comes to that. Needless to say, I would imagine almost all opposition MPs would support the publication of the report. Labour MPs certainly would. I would have thought Green MPs, Liberal Democrats, SNP, Plaid Cymru, I, I would have thought the vast majority, if not all others, would. So it's not like you've really got one group wanting to be published and, and another group not. I don't think it's one group against another group. The government would essentially be standing alone against a lot of very different interest groups all wanting it published, is how I would read it. As I say, not a legal expert, so I don't know if the party political nature of the suppression would hamper the government's argument, but it will be interesting. I'm not sure we can hope for the full document to be leaked. I think if we're going to get access to it, it is only going to be through a judicial review or the government backing down under pressure. Um, there were a number of reports that the government absolutely did not want releasing leaked last year but it was a very different situation then uh, because one the benefits of leaking were greater because parliament was strong enough to be able to order the government to officially release reports um, but also at the moment the penalties for getting caught uh, are much more severe in the civil service with Dominic Cummings making a point of brutalizing civil servants as part of his reforms. So in regards to what we do know about Cygnus, we know it recommended an increase in surge capacity in the NHS. Even recently, I know it was a bit odd, a government spokesperson was having to admit that yes, Cygnus did reveal that the NHS would not cope. And then he linked that to the current situation where the NHS is not coping right now. Um, but he also tried to say, oh yeah, but hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Oh yes, yes, hindsight's great. So we're not talking about hindsight. We're talking about a recommendation from 2016. That's well, nearly four years. Well, it's four years ago since 2016, but it's nearly four years ago since the recommendation. So that's not hindsight, is it now? But this scandal is being reported in the right wing as well as the left wing, wing press. Now, that can often be a sign that the government are not just going to be able to tough this one out. Because usually what happened, if this is just being reported in The Guardian in the mirror, then, you know, the, the government will go, well, the people who read that don't vote Tory anyway, it will be all right. The Telegraph and the Mail and, and the rest of them will cover for us. That's not really happening. They're not pushing it as hard in the right wing media, but it is in there. And as more people become aware that the government have had years of notice for this crisis and did nothing, that's the important thing. It's not that they followed some recommendations and that this is a very different beast. That's not the case. They actually did nothing. Um, even worsened our readiness, if anything. So in a situation like that, the political temperature could keep rising for ministers. But as with all such things, this one will play out over months, I suspect. So I'll just have to keep an eye on proceedings. But until then, I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, then please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.